Hypochlorous acid is a highly effective antimicrobial solution possessing safer properties than traditional chemicals for cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. It's also being used in various healthcare applications as well. What's fascinating is that hypochlorous is also naturally produced in our immune system. This is a common claim on websites talking about the subject, however, a lot of them stop at the claim itself. In this video, we're going to have some fun and delve into the science. Though I'm going to be covering this topic in a bit of a linear fashion, keep in mind that these processes aren't all linear. We're going to cover a lot pretty quick, so let's start out strong with a process called phagocytosis. This is carried out by white blood cells called neutrophils and macrophages. Phago comes from the Greek word meaning to consume. Remember that. Phagocytic cells can chemically detect invading microbes and are attracted to them. This process is called chemotaxis. Once they reach the pathogens, they recognize them by specific molecular patterns and swallow them up. The best visual for this is basically Pac-Man. The phagocyte extends its membrane around the germ, forming a vesicle called a phagosome, sealing it off from the extracellular or outside environment. The phagosome then fuses with lysosomes, forming an enzyme-rich phagolysosome. One enzyme, called lysozyme, is a substance produced at this point to break down the cell walls of bacteria, especially the thick cell wall of gram-positive bacteria, but other chemicals are produced as well to tackle other pathogens. Here is where we get to the hypochlorous acid production. Inside, a special enzyme complex called NADPH oxidase utilizes NADPH as an electron donor to produce reactive oxygen species like superoxide anion and hydrogen peroxide. By the way, NADPH comes from NAD+, or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. This substance is present in all cells and aids in various functions. Another important enzyme exists called myeloperoxidase. This enzyme is responsible for catalyzing the hydrogen peroxide we just made, along with chloride ions that are abundantly present in the body as electrolytes to form our pal, hypochlorous acid. This is known as the cell's oxidative burst or respiratory burst. At this point, the hypochlorous acid and other reactive oxygen species take care of pathogens where lysozyme might leave off. You might be wondering why people still get sick if hypochlorous acid is so efficacious. The most broad answer is that a person's age, health, and ratio of invading pathogens to white blood cells plays a huge role in how effective a person's immunity is, despite hypochlorous acid and other chemicals. Everyone's different. I'm sure your local pathologists or immunologists can provide additional details. I'll also say that though the body makes hypochlorous acid differently than commercial methods of salt, water, and electricity, the final solution is exactly the same, a naturally occurring antimicrobial solution with a high level of efficacy. There's so much more to talk about on this subject, but that's enough for this video. If you enjoy this content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, comment, all of that stuff. As always, thanks for watching.